There's been a lot of stories, especially from those who live among New Jersey and live in the inner New Jersey suburbs, that the Pine Barrens are essentially one of the most terrifying places you could possibly ever go missing in. And over the decades, there's been dozens of missing person cases. And so this one I'm especially, uh, in particular, proud of. So look forward to this up next, right here, the Pine Barrens. Thank you again. Get the word out. Appreciate it. So this is the story of none other than the Pine Barrens. It's a very serious missing person case that has never gotten too much coverage. The remains of missing New Jersey man Charles McGee, age 55, and their acquaintance William Klein have been arrested and charged with this very serious homicide. Charles McGee of Pemberton Township was taken into custody on Monday. He is charged with first-degree murder, desecration of a corpse, and firearms offenses for illegal firearm possession. Authorities believe McGee shot William Klein Jr. of Pemberton Township directly in the back of the neck and then buried him in Brendan T. Byrne Forest. Klein was last seen leaving his home in a gold 1996 Ford Ranger pickup on August 20th. So this is a recent case, because we're talking 2019, 2018 is when this is taking place. It's an active um, missing person case because there's still some victims who have never been found. That's correct. Authorities released a statement on the missing victim. It is unclear how Klein and McGee actually knew each other but authorities state that the two had spent prior time during many arrangements. The motive of the murder is unclear. So this is very, uh, very serious because it's one of the worst missing person cases, actually, in a very long time. Took place in the Pine Barrens, which is a pine, it's basically a wooded forest that is an abandoned forest in northern northwest New Jersey. Hardly everyone, I mean, literally everybody that I've heard of avoids this place like the plague, knowing just how dangerous it is. Okay? But they found many missing people here recovered their remains, recovered other things from these people, and they would go into this kind of wooded area. Here's part of the story that they were talking about. We had a plan. We pulled out in Manda's car. And fortunately, I was not at one of the live, or one of the five body farms in the United States at the time, where those who donate for science are buried. Instead, I was in the corner of a vast and creepy New Jersey Pine Barrens wooded area, as John McPhee wrote. And from a gangland point of view, it makes better sense to put a body in the Pine Barrens than in the Hudson River. That's what state troopers have said. They would never find anything. I always figured there was a lot buried out there. Now I'm finding out why. New Jersey does not even permit burial and excavation of anything in this area. They do not let you in there because they know that the Pine Barrens are a very dangerous place. We hiked a mile or so to a spot closer to a busy paved road than the fire road. There in a clearing near a large cistern was an obviously disturbed piece of ground. No straight lines in nature nor in the world. I maintain that our mistake is in overthinking our criminal desire or how criminals like to conceal things. He was no mastermind, just a panicked criminal. But maybe it had not occurred to him that he could find better cover off a fire road than the actual highway. We had no time to investigate the rest of the Pine Barrens that weekend. 
full as it might be of actual victims. The next day, we had to excavate and get out of there. So, unfortunately, no one has truly visited this region in a long time. The Pine Barrens are off limits. People stay away from just having anything to do with this place, and you can understand why. When you hear these stories, you know, they had a plan. They pulled out in Amanda's car. They drove all along the road thinking this was going to be no big deal, right? And so they spotted two places along the fire strip where a car would pull over. One seemed particularly promising. It was by a trail with a pile of natural brush to furnish a screen. In the wet, cold spring of 2014, it wouldn't have been any issue, and we just, you know, would continue on. But the area behind the brush pile did not match. It was dark. It was like it was made of some kind of sponge substance. Amanda said triumphantly, is it, is it rope? I don't know. Lorna planted several pin flags and then continued onward. We were a team, and we found another spot that looked promising. I was a little freaked out by the morning's inter- er, instruction that day. Kimberly Moran, attractive age 35, it was made for young, tough people, but they emphasized that forensic archaeology was only archaeology, according to them. You excavate and bag artifacts. There's nothing really complicated about this. And then you move on to the next, you know, land plot. Excavate artifacts. Excavate more. Moran had said to start the class that she and her two assistants proceeded to tell stories about all of the bodies, you know, and different things that were buried here. I learned some things that I can never unlearn about the human experience. The box of donuts in the middle of the table were untouched. And much like the history of this area, I don't want to go back. So people don't really like dragging up the buried secrets of the Pine Barrens for good reason, too. Because I will tell you, folks, this is, as far as New Jersey goes, this is essentially the most serious missing person case you're going to find in New Jersey's history. And these woods are said to contain strange hiking trails and things that disappear, you know. And it's clear that a lot more goes on there than they've said. You know, the hunters go into the area of the Pine Barrens. There are just drug uh, drug lords and drug czars who have been there a lot. This is not a place that you would normally ever walk into. You don't want to visit it. It's not It's not a good vacation spot, I can tell you that. And the people who live, live here are uh, different than anything you've ever seen. My parents' quad has been found along with my father's shotgun, which was strapped onward onto the side of the cart. But there's still no sign of any of my parents. Their quad was found stuck in the field not far from the shack up the road that they use to, you know, bait and hunt all the deer in the area. Trail cam footage has nothing, and there's nothing that's been captured for weeks on the motion sensors. Vaughn said that even if the couple, it, if even if the couple was actually out in the elements of those woods, he didn't think it would be anything out of the ordinary. He was hopeful they might survive. But, you know, if you look at this place, this is the last, uh, this is literally the last area, you know, you would ever want to walk into as far as woods are concerned. This is not the place you would go. It's very, very rugged. You can look at the trees. You can see it's just effortless to get lost. There's been thousands of reports of people just getting lost in these unbelievably dark woods that are in back of the Pine Barrens. 
And they joke about it sometimes and say, you know, they found another... They found another warm one, which means they found another body. It's a place that the mafia used all the time. And the district attorney, you know, jokes about it, but it's very serious. A lot of people who have gone into these areas, especially the woods around the Pine Barrens and New Jersey and Delaware, have never returned. To this day, people don't know what happened to them, and they've never caught any sight of them ever again. For good reason. It's a place that not even pets would want to enter. It's really, really, you know, outside the limits of what civilization can tolerate. And this is where everybody has reported about these missing person cases. A lot of them were just in the middle of the grove of trees. They found people's body lying out you know, on top of the leaves in the middle of the grove of trees. Nobody covered it up in some of these scenarios. So it's really quite horrible if you have to look at it from the overall perspective of what they did. But um, it's a valuable piece of history to learn. More than 100 volunteers on foot through uh, use of helicopter, bloodhounds, state police, and others went into the Pine Barrens and they still couldn't find any sign of the Parkers and similar people. I don't think we're ever going to know, Vaughn said. I mean, there wasn't an ATV crash, but why they got off and why they ended up in the thicket the way they did, far from the house, we are never going to know what happened. Their disappearance became a mystery that seemed implausible. How could two people just vanish? Instantly into thin air. Right here, Ocean County, New Jersey. Surely, some speculated on social media, they must have been the victims of foul play. Well, I think that we could count on that fact. Because the hunters came. And that's, you know, more than enough to say, there's been problems in, this, in these woods in particular, and in this area, for ages. We're talking going back 50 years. So, this is an interesting story. I've linked it in the video. I want everybody to check it out. And get this out there far and wide, folks. Because people need to know, you know, what's really going on. And it's, it's quite frightening in certain cases, too. Thank you. A Long Island man was charged with the murder of his wife, who had been missing for over two weeks in the Pine Barrens area near Suffolk, New Jersey. Homicide squad detectives arrested Marcelo Molinari, age 43, after police found Melissa in the Rocky Point Barron State Forest off Kearns Road. Melissa was last seen at the couple's home on Lolly Lane on November 21st. And she disappeared forever. So there's another classic example of uh, recent victims who just they, they go into this place and I'm telling you folks the threat is real you know the terror is real you want to stay away from the pine barrens most likely if you can if you can help to do that you want to stay away from there because you will not ever return is what is becoming very very crystal clear uh, with some of these things. And some of these cases are very, very similar to each other. And so, I would hazard to say that the Pine Barrens is probably one of the most dangerous forests in America, you know. And it, it makes perfect sense that it really lives up to its name. They've had at least 10 missing person cases of people here. And... Um, they just, they go into those woods, and when you go into a place like that, especially in central New Jersey, it's, it's a lot more unlikely you're going to come out. It's believed by many to be the work of a serial killer, they say. The questions remain, though, as to whether more than one person might be doing these crimes and who they are. In 2007, it was featured on America's Most Wanted. 
the murderer was dubbed the Butcher of Manorville. To this day, there are no leads, and the Pine Barrens continues to pile up a lot of victims. Right in the center of that grove of trees, they go out there and they never come back. So, let's get the word out. And um, it's definitely, uh, definitely time a lot more people know about this case and what's been going on. So, uh, thank you. Make sure to spread the videos, like, comment when you can, and I'll see you next time. Staten Island had their own uh, Pine Barrens cases too. The mob would bury them right there in the Pine Woods, basically behind the Jersey Shore Center. Very interesting history that place. Thanks again.